This story is about one outstanding girl named Trixie. Unfortunately in one of her last battles she lost her life and by idea should have found eternal rest. But this time the fate was distributed differently. Namely being already on the other world Trixie got to the gate of protection and after some period of time exclusively by her own forces was able to clean them. As a result, at the end of all this horror girl received a legendary achievement and with it the opportunity to redeem her guilt. A bit of backstory, Trixie herself is a very lucky person. When she turned 16 she passed the National Hunter Test and at the end she was given a unique skill called Spatial Interference. As soon as she graduated from high school, a lot of companies lined up to offer her cooperation on the most favorable terms. From that moment on, the girl realized that from now on, she would only go forward, no matter what. But unfortunately, at some point Trixie's life started to go downhill from there. The worst incident of her life is directly related to the gate, and it's called the Yongwado Gate Incident. These gates lasted four years, during which time a large number of innocent people lost their lives. Trixie went to the gate almost immediately after graduating from high school and survived there with great difficulty, because there is no other way to survive there. Despite the fact that in the process of survival, the girl lost her benefactor and learned the insidious truth about which she should not have known, she still tried hard to survive, no matter how hard it was for her with this information. But apparently fate had other plans for her, and during the final battle the girl lost her life. Since the bullet had gone through, it was obvious that this was what had happened, but at one point Trixie began to open her eyes. At first it was quite difficult for her to understand what was happening, but the woman on the contrary did not stop trying to bring her to her senses and make her run away from here. The events were happening right in the middle of the store, everything around was starting to collapse, and the girl was just kneeling and staring at one point. At the moment of opening her eyes after the eternal rest a very familiar sight appeared before Trixie's face. The only thing that has changed is the perception of the situation. The girl was no longer scared. She was very calm and cool-headed. While everyone is running around screaming, she just kneels silently on her knees. Somehow Trixie had managed to go back to the time when she was 19 years old, the day the nightmare began, the day she had lived in for three years. By the way, the woman who was trying to bring Trixie to her senses decided not to tolerate ignoring her but just grabbed the girl by the arm and took her with her. It was decided not to resist, but just silently follow her. When the people managed to get to the nearest shelter, the first thing they did was discuss what had happened. As it turned out, some of the people had even received notifications on their phones that they had entered the gate. Trixie was standing next to them at the time, and she knew for sure that she had heard these conversations three years ago. While there was free time, the girl decided not to waste it, and tried to remember thoroughly how she managed to survive in such difficult conditions for three whole years. In the beginning, Trixie simply relied on the advice of one of the men, who really understood what to do. First of all, you have to check your status window to see what your personal characteristics are. To be honest, when Trixie went to that window, she was a bit shocked, because she saw that her personal profile was much worse than last time and there were some blockages as well. The average strength of an adult male is 10, so if anyone here has more than 10, they have to tell us about it. Meanwhile, Trixie's dexterity has already been improved by 34. Last time she told us all about herself, but this time she decided not to tell us. Which is about the time the first monster should show up. Trixie thought it would be best not to wait for that moment, but to ask people to move away from the wall beforehand to minimize losses after meeting the first nuisance. Since men are men, they can't just listen to a woman without any explanation. In response to Trixie's request, they just started asking a bunch of questions. Since there was no time to answer them, the girl grabbed her knife and once again urged everyone to step back. At least with the help of a cold weapon, I managed to push them back some distance. Just a few seconds after that, the wall starts to collapse in a huge, horrible monster comes out from behind it. Despite this intimidating appearance, he is only a rank F. But be that as it may, even such a weak rank is quite dangerous to ordinary people. 
That's why the girl gripped her weapon tightly and went into battle to neutralize him quickly. The guys tried to stop her, saying it was dangerous, but they didn't have any effect on Trixie because she knows better than anyone what she's doing. Because the monster was too large, each subsequent attack was given to him with great difficulty, which allowed the girl to dodge his blows without much effort. In the course of the fight Trixie realized that the knife in her hand is almost impossible to penetrate such armor. She always has a plan B. She also felt an old feeling that came back after a long time. It's going through her head like it was yesterday. The falling sand and debris of the wall, the crying people and most importantly her favorite skill, spatial intervention. This ability allows Trixie to move in the blink of an eye and easily aim for the weakest spots. After using this ability, defeating such a big guy with just one knife is no longer an impossible task. It was only a few minutes into the fight, and the opponent was already lying on the floor without any signs of life. The male spectators were, to put it mildly, shocked, and did not even know how to comment on what they had just seen. There was only one question in their minds, what had just happened. Trixie was very happy about the fact that she now had the power to save these people and most importantly, that she knew how to use it properly, and had valuable knowledge that would help her at a low level, to fight monsters at a much stronger, intent or two ranks. But anyway, when it first happened Trixie also had the skill of spatial interference, and even with that power she was still pulled into the gate, where she fought hard for her life, but in the end she never managed to leave the gate. However, somehow, unseen, the girl was back in her nineteenth year when she first entered the gate. After a long conversation between the guys, they came to a mutual decision to go to the indoor gymnasium, which is a hiding place during practice evacuations. But still some like-minded people chose to stay in the store. Apparently they are still having a hard time realizing what even happened, and it's quite difficult for them to move behind the crowd because they're not sure if the decision they made will really be the right one. By the way, this guy in the brown jacket is named James, and for some reason he started referring to the girl as the leader of the group, even though she didn't do anything to even slightly claim that position in the group. There is also another important person, his name is Tyler, the position he occupies is called intelligence, he was put on it because this skill he has the best developed, so we can assume that better than him, will not cope with just no one else. And this guy in the white jacket is named Tyson. His specialty is agility and charm. After doing a little analysis, the guys, that most likely at this point, they are in the territory of the Windjammer monsters. Anyway, these were the first people Trixie had met upon her return here. She was sure that if that monster that had raided the supermarket hadn't been defeated, many people would have already ended their survival at the very beginning. But still, unlike the last time, it felt different now. On the way the boys saw something strange, namely, a certain part of the city was completely destroyed, the houses were standing at a great inclination, and it was quite likely that they were about to collapse. At first glance it looked like there had been an earthquake here recently. But considering the fact that the guys are in the gate, it's quite possible that it might not be an earthquake, but just some monster decided to make a mess of things. Trixie didn't make any conclusions but deep down she knew it was sadder than it could have been. Suddenly she heard a painfully familiar sound, the other members of the group heard it too, and started talking furiously about it. Trixie, realizing how serious it was, immediately told them to keep their mouths shut, so as not to draw attention to themselves. The monster was a giant bee, and judging by the look on the girl's face, it was the kind of creature she didn't have the best memories of. As soon as it came into view, Trixie had everyone running for their lives. Every minute they were here, people became more and more convinced that they were in a place like hell. When they managed to get away for a while, they immediately asked questions like what was it all about? We call this creature the red-striped wasp. Its peculiarity lies primarily in its size, but that's just the beginning. Usually wasps sting people with their dwelling. In this case it uses it as a drill, in case it's not satisfied with something. When suddenly the monster managed to locate the people and immediately used its stinger to climb through the concrete walls of the store. Within seconds, a huge hole was created in the ceiling. 
As soon as it happened, panicking, all the people except Trixie started running away. The girl stood like a dumbfounded, she tried to understand since when the monsters began to defend their territory, because before this did not happen. Supermarket is definitely a window zone, but the fact that wasps invade here, it looks very strange. Suddenly she realizes that the body of the first monster, which was destroyed with just a knife, is attracting other monsters nearby. In short, they're just hungry for some tasty fresh flesh. That's why the only normal way to survive is to just hide as best you can, and believe with all your heart that no one will find you. Meanwhile, Wasp carefully looked into the hole she had just drilled, and when she was sure that everything was fine, she began to descend into it. Then she slowly began to walk around the store, and sniff out what is going on here in general. Good thing before that time, all the people have already managed to hide and no one was left without shelter. Now the most important thing is that no one was found, because it is very difficult to fight with her. Trixie was sure that she probably wouldn't notice them, because there were human bodies lying everywhere, which emitted quite a strong odor. Against this background it was much harder to smell a living person, so the chances of escaping were quite high. But it wasn't that smooth, because one of the people is allergic to dust, and initially he tried to restrain himself but at one point it became so unbearable that the man started coughing all over the store. Of course, the bee heard this and was ready to attack. To begin with, she slowly turned around, turned on her drill and abruptly ran towards the guys with great speed. Due to the strong effect of surprise, the guys were a bit confused, but still managed to react quickly to this attack. The key role in this case played a frying pan, which was lying quite nearby. One of the men grabbed it, and was able to repel this bee blow, to say that it was difficult to just say nothing, but nevertheless he managed to save himself and by some time. Of course Trixie just couldn't sit idly by, so she grabbed her knife tightly in her hands and set off to help. As she ran, she asked the boy to push the bee aside so that she could strike it accurately. In principle, the guy heard her, but so far he was not sure that he could do it, because the bee has incredible power at least dozens of times stronger than a man. To be able to push it away, something really magical must happen. Whatever it was, the guy gave his best, and in the end he fell to the floor, already almost without strength. Basically for Trixie it was enough, because at the very last moment she managed to become in front of the guy already slaughtered with variable skill. When the bee got too close, the girl saw where its weak spot was and immediately stabbed it there which left the bee no longer able to drill with its stinger, which at least means that it is much less dangerous now. But Trixie, as a professional fighter, decided not to stop there, and immediately made a couple more accurate stabbing blows, so that surely the wasp would no longer interfere with their survival. After a few more minutes, the fight was over. This once again proves that if you know how to attack correctly, there is no problem. As suddenly spoiled this huge fat creature crawls out a man on whom it fell, to put it mildly he is completely dirty, but it did not prevent him from being the happiest on this planet, and the first thing he did, of course, thank Trixie, because it is thanks to her survived. Then two others came over to ask how they were feeling and if they needed any help. Frankly, everyone was amazed at Trixie's cold-blooded behavior, and anyone else in her place would have gone crazy. Then the girl as soon as possible recommended to go to another place and wait there for the night. The most important thing on the way is not to meet any more monster, but before the guys go on the road, the victim is desirable to change his clothes, because his smell at the moment is very expressive and will attract a lot of attention. When everything was ready, the guys moved to some secluded place, built a fire and set up tents to sleep in. There was also a very tasty meal prepared and everyone could eat enough, as there were no problems with the ingredients so far. Because of recent events, Trixie had forgotten that the girl who brought her food was much older than she was, so she had forgotten about respectful speech, but she quickly corrected herself and began to communicate properly again. And for some reason this woman too much wanted to get to know each other, and Trixie in turn could not understand why these courtesies, she just wants to eat quietly alone and not to be distracted by absolutely nothing, because every person, no matter how strong he is, needs a reboot. 
By the way, the name of this curious Lady Maria, on the way when the whole group went in search of shelter, she managed to find a small knife. Since she does not know how to handle such things, she decided to give it to Trixie, because in her hands it will be more useful. In the system this thing is described as a folding knife of rank F, attack power from 10 to 20 units, the blade is sharpened very well, if you stick it well, you can do critical damage to the opponent. Well to say that this knife is some kind of incredible cannot be, but nevertheless any this will be better than a normal kitchen knife. Before taking it for herself, Trixie asked Maria if she was sure she wanted to give it as a gift, because at a time like this it's very dangerous to walk around without a weapon, and at some point it can save a life. She said she was fine with it, and besides, with so much use, the kitchen knife is bound to break soon. In this respect the woman is exactly right, because of the razor's experience, it feels like it could break at any moment, but it's pretty hard to tell unless you look through the status window. But since Maria was a kitchen helper, she's well versed in knives. It was very good news for Trixie because maybe Maria could get a unique skill called the blacksmith's touch. Accurately diagnosing a kitchen knife is no easy task in itself. It clearly means he has an innate talent. In the end, the girl did accept the gift, but in return, in order not to leave the woman completely unarmed, he decided to give her his kitchen knife because in critical situations even it can be useful. Then the girls were approached by two guys who had apparently been looking for them for a long time. In general, the guy just wanted to tell me that his characteristics from defense and persistence had increased by one unit. It was a big surprise to him, because usually two characteristics are never increased at the same time. But if you think about it that way, it's really beneficial. The rules say that personal stats can be increased depending on the difficulty of the confrontation, but last time it was only possible to increase skills with items, so it's all very confusing. Then the guys started asking the girls some slightly uncomfortable questions. They wondered how she knew so much information, and why during encounters with monsters she feels the best and knows how to behave. In response to this she said that she was very interested in gates during the peaceful time, read a lot of books, and attended various events dedicated to this subject. But the guys didn't really believe it, because Trixie seemed more like someone who'd been through it before. It seems as if the girl already knows everything about monsters, and in general too capable for an ordinary person. To put it briefly, she feels like a fish in water here, unlike everyone else. It's hard to argue here, and it's even harder to justify herself. But nevertheless Trixie stood up and at least tried to take control of the situation. She began to press that saving people comes first. And if someone is afraid to follow her, and is not satisfied with something, they can easily move apart from her. No one is holding anyone back here. Then Tyson joined their conversation. He obviously didn't like the fact that instead of helping him, the guys were sitting around talking nonsense, and it would be best if they all got together and helped him put up the tents. Of course the guys apologized and said they would help him out. The next day, in order to get to the indoor gymnasium quickly, they had to cross a bridge. Trixie chose that route, because if he went around it, it would take about a week, which is a lot of effort and resources, and no normal person would want to walk for a week instead of a day. However, a little closer Trixie noticed that the water of the table was cloudy, although just yesterday it was still transparent. These patterns in the water in the form of clouds symbolize that there lives an oil whale. Characteristic of its habitat is the appearance of oil stains on the surface of the water. In this case, guys should be careful, because these oil slicks have paralyzing effects. In case a person falls into the water, there is a 100% probability that he will not be able to swim back out. Well, according to Trixie, it's not that bad. It's just a matter of not trying to throw each other into the water and then everything will be fine. But there's one more little problem. For some reason as soon as the guys came up there was a thick fog that made it hard to see what was going on up ahead. After walking just a few dozen meters, Trixie felt like something was right in front of her. But despite this she decided not to stop. After a few more meters she saw a huge clouded oil whale in front of her. It's honestly pretty hard to tell what he's doing right in the middle of the bridge and why he decided to pay out of the water in the first place. Anyway, 
It's a really big problem, because he's too huge the group can't move forward anymore. Despite the fact that this creature has no eyes, it is sensitive to the movements of living things. Without eyes it can navigate better than any human with eyes. So far, it hasn't been able to locate the boys, so if we're very careful, they can turn back. But even if the guys manage to silently turn around and start moving, it's not the end. There is a good chance that behind them may already be waiting for some monster. Before starting to move, the girl asked the guy what his defense level was. He answered 16. In principle it's a pretty good score, and it's obviously higher than the others. But unfortunately even if you don't take into account that Keith excretes oil streaks, containing paralyzing and slime, he'll be weaker. Trixie then asked who had the highest dexterity score. The lucky guy was Tyson, in which case the direction was set. The best option is to deal with the whale, and then the group won't have to go back, and everyone will be able to cross the bridge safely. To accomplish this task, it will take the strength of these two promising young men. To be frank, they were shocked, but nevertheless, before sending them on a mission Trixie asked them if they would do it for the group. The guys said they would try but on one condition, they wanted to count on the girl's help. Of course she agreed, and led the boys straight to the whale. On the way, there was a lot of tension among the men, and they kept asking if they could really make it. Trixie in turn boosted their morale as best she could. Now the most important task is to get as close as you can. This monster looked very intimidating from the side, especially when you realize how heavy it is, it makes you think that it's impossible to defeat it and the idea of fighting it is pretty stupid. As Trixie approached the whale, she could smell a horrible stench coming from it, but that didn't change the situation. Before it started, the girl activated her trump card skill spatial intervention to focus and awaken her magical power. When the opportunity arose, Trixie began to look at the whale's weak spots. And once one was found, she turned on the lighter and ordered the boys to get started right away. The guys were very focused and responded very clearly to the instruction. Taking a stone slab in his hands, the man struck a hard blow right on one of the most vulnerable points of this whale. Of course, this first of all caused him to wake up and he was very angry. Trixie, in turn, immediately threw a lighter at him. As his entire body is covered in oil, he's very flammable, and of course it's hard to extinguish such a huge creature in a short period of time so he's likely to stay burning until he's completely gone. In order not to burn herself, the girl immediately jumped towards the guys to hide behind their cover. In principle I could say that the plan worked just fine. It was decided not to stay long in this place, and when the fire had died down a little, they went to the others with their heads held high and proud. When Trixie got back, James came right over to her, he called her and the guys good guys and added that next time he would definitely go on a mission with them. This guy always talks like he's a good person, but you should never rush in and trust the people in the gate. Often the awakened have two titles, and until you personally recognize these titles, it's best not to trust them. But right now Trixie is more concerned with the fact that the error in her status window doesn't go away. This is the first time she's ever seen such an occurrence, and it's really stressing her out a bit. When the girl came out of the gate, she had already thought of the first thing to do, she would need to go to the laboratory of the awakened or the research center of the gate. When the girl came out of the gate, she had already thought of the first thing to do, she would need to go to the awakened lab or the gate research center. It was just great news, people were finally able to breathe a sigh of relief, but they had to hurry up, because many of them were probably tired and would not mind to finally lie down and take a break. Suddenly one of the girls asked everyone to stop and said that there was a man ahead of them. Trixie took a closer look, and it turned out to be true. Some girl was standing not far from them, and she had a bow in her hand, ready to fire at a moment's notice. Turns out even in the gym, there were talented awakened people trying to reach out to the outside world. As it turned out, the girl wasn't alone. She also had her archer brother with her, with whom they were apparently very close. Trixie was surprised to see them, because these two were the ranger twins, the last time the girl had met them was much later. These two are credited with turning this gym into an indestructible castle, they are genius hunters at the peak of their powers. 
Each of their shots hits the target with a 90% chance of hitting the target. Many have never even seen them miss. At best it was done on purpose. And also when the goals end, the twins constantly argue with each other because of the fact that some one of them made more shots than they had to. They are mildly annoyed with these arguments with their colleagues. At the moment, the guys are sitting behind a small rock and thinking about what they should do best. Eventually Trixie said she would go out to them in person and try to talk to them. As soon as she did that and started to open her mouth, the archer of Oka's moments pulled out an arrow from behind his back and fired it straight at her. The arrow flew straight at Trixie's head by the way, the kind of precision one can only call for. Luckily, the girl was not someone who could be destroyed with just one arrow. Without even blinking, she intercepted the arrow with her hand and made a very serious expression. It was a very serious expression on her face, indicating that she was very unhappy with the way he had treated her. After that, the archers apologized immediately, and said that it was their typical reaction to people spying on them, so they shouldn't be too offended. Trixie had forgotten that these guys were as stupid as they could be, and that they didn't know how to do anything else but aim their shots. The other two boys wanted to stand up for their queen, but James stopped them. Now was not the best time to stir up conflict in case it made them not want to be allowed in. Then slowly but surely a man came up behind the archers, probably their elder. Then he grabbed the kids by the neck and started to discipline them in front of everyone, which was a strange sight, especially considering the fact that there was a whole crowd of people behind Trixie. When the discipline was over, the man apologized for the two kids' antics and said that they were hard to control in general. By the way, his name is David, and he's a tank at the gym. Somehow he knew right away that the survivors were standing in front of him, and he was extremely curious about where they were coming from. When the guys told him, he was a little shocked, because it's a really long and hard road. James also said that they had originally left the department store so they were able to lug a lot of groceries and necessities with them, after the man asked if they would be able to speak to the person in charge of the room environment. David confidently replied that the guys will have no problem talking, since they have just finished hunting, they can go together. And also as it turned out the gym has ironclad rules, according to which they are obligatory to accept all survivors. It can be said that this is just great news. In that case, with a smile on their faces, the whole group followed David. Now the most important thing was that the archer's words were confirmed and nothing unexpected happened. On the way, a man was telling facts about a beetle they just caught that looked really bad, but if you take the contents out and fry it, it tastes a lot like shrimp. Some of the survivors when they knew they were eating it, they almost threw up. When the guys finally managed to enter the indoor gymnasium, they saw a lot of people, and the most interesting thing was that each of them was doing something, like improving the tent, mopping the floors of the gym, and so on. It was a lively scene that is quite hard to see in the gate. Trixie now fully realized how long it had been since she had been in that gym. David immediately asked his assistant where the head man was, so he could take the survivors to him and give them a chance to talk to him. He was right there in his personal tent. Then the archer asked for one or two representatives to come in. James was the first to nominate, of course, and he took Trixie with him and urged everyone else to wait for them outside. Before going inside the guys apologized for disturbing them, but no one there was definitely not going to scold them. The main man himself felt awkward, because he had kept a whole crowd of people waiting who had come all the way out here. By the way, the name of this goody-goody is Charlie. At this time, Trixie was remembering how the events at the gym had unfolded the first time. Despite the fact that she hadn't been there long, it was the man who had helped her fighting skills in the past. For starters, Charlie had asked how old all the survivors were on average. Mostly everyone was middle-aged, which is very good news because the situation here is such that food has become scarce and the bugs have become many times less. People are working and there is simply nothing to feed them. The old man was also very grateful that the survivors brought some food from the supermarket. To build a closer rapport, James said that along the way he and the rest of the group as far as this gym is concerned is an all-powerful fortress, and in the event that they were allowed to live here, 
he promised that he and his boys would be in full compliance with their duties. In any case, first of all, Charlie will let the guys sleep at the design place tonight, and about the schedule will be discussed tomorrow. At the moment, he is more interested in what the survivors manage to see, and how many people of life on the way here have lost their lives. When James reported that their group had not lost a single man, Charlie almost went crazy, because usually if a group crosses a bridge, they have a hundred percent probability of losses. But after these words the guy was not confused, and said that it was all thanks to one of their men with a unique skill of reconnaissance. Charlie was insanely happy when he heard this, because talented people are in short supply in these parts, and if you consider that this man is also a tactician, he is literally worth his weight in gold. The true value of chess comes when you can use as many pieces as possible, since the gym currently has more resources than before Trixie regressed, the likelihood of the gym collapsing in the near future has decreased many times over. The girl couldn't sleep that night, the thought of a good tactician never left her head. Since he was here, she should at least try to raise as many good awakened people as possible. First of all, it would help the development of the gym, and secondly, when it closes, moving with experienced people is much more pleasant. These two should first of all stay here, and persistently develop their talents, as they have special skills, raising such people will be very useful, and at least a few times easier than a normal person. About Maria it is quite a controversial issue, since she is a blacksmith it is difficult to assume whether she can develop her skills here. Purely in theory it would be possible to raise her as a tank, but no matter how it will be a pity to throw away the goods of a blacksmith who is so rare. James is a versatile person with a high level of ability. He doesn't specialize in a particular field but is very easy to learn absolutely in any direction. It would be nice to develop his quality under Charlie's clear guidance. One of them has high dexterity, but due to lack of experience in combat, she always prefers to stay in the rear. In general, if you look at the situation from the right angle, it doesn't look so bad. A safe place with a closed ceiling, perhaps at the moment it's the best option to relax and get a good night's sleep. Trixie would love to rest, but she has an urgent need to go to a place. So after a little brainstorming, she quickly packed up and went on her way. To be honest she only knew roughly where this place was since she had been there for the last time about three years ago, but even so, the girl still managed to find it. Inside the gate sometimes there are items that can be obtained if you fulfill certain conditions, these items themselves are called hidden, because not everyone knows that there is a possibility to get them at all. Trixie clearly remembered how before the regression in the same place the object was taken by another scout, who would have thought that this knowledge would ever be useful. By the way, the atmosphere here is just terrible, and the cages sat animals, which sighed very heavily and only that and did that to inflame the situation. Here Trixie will have to fulfill the task, which is to pray for the souls of the little creatures that sadly left this world. Just a few minutes later, the girl received a notification informing her that she had fulfilled the conditions, and a small reward was given to her for it. Then the handing over process began, and it looked like some kind of magical fairy tale. In Trixie's hand, a bright blue light formed, which eventually began to fade, and left behind a brand new karambit knife. It's a knife many times bigger than the one the girl has at the moment. It's the most effective weapon you can get at absolutely no risk. Since Trixie knows how to use it, it will be useful to her for a while. Now it's best to return quietly, so no one will even know she left the area. When Trixie crossed the threshold of the gym, she breathed out a sigh of relief but suddenly in the middle of the deep darkness someone said the phrase you're here? Of course it made her very wary, so to protect herself had to get a knife and go into full alert. They were just archers who, when they saw that Trixie wasn't there, decided to make a little joke. To be honest, the girl was scared shitless, but at least she was glad to be out of danger. In general, as it turned out, the guys saw for the first time a man capable of crossing their arrow with his hand, even David in such cases prefers to just dodge, because the arrow itself flies with incredible speed. Before finishing her story, Trixie decided to get acquainted and introduced herself. After a little chatting, the guys decided to give Trixie a little ultimatum. 
They can keep it a secret that the girl left the gym at night without permission, but in return, she has to listen to their request and fulfill it. The girl had already realized beforehand that it would probably be a very troublesome affair, and this premonition was 100% correct. When Trixie agreed to listen to their terms, the boys, with satisfied expressions on their faces, held the intrigue for a moment, and then, with one voice, offered to fight her. Of course Trixie understood that the conditions could not be simple, but such a port of events she certainly did not expect. Here is definitely something to think about. Basically these children have only fought with monsters, and perhaps in a fight with a real person, they will feel less confident. Before the regression Charlie lost his life quite by accident because of one internal conflict that happened at the gym. Maybe it's because the twins have a really hard time fighting people. These kids probably just didn't have the strength to shoot the people they were so protective of. Even though Charlie's human resources have now increased, Trixie is still worried, and still doubts that organizing a duel is a good idea. But in the end, despite all the pros and cons, the girl agrees. When the kids heard the positive answer, they were overjoyed, and if Trixie hadn't stopped them in time, they probably would have woken up everyone who was sleeping. The next day, right in the middle of the gymnasium, the kids organized themselves into a small battlefield and actually started the fight. The kids acted according to their practice strategy. The guy is in close contact and constantly distracts the opponent, and the girl is on some high ground and fires shots from a bow. Frankly, so far, they're not doing a very good job of countering. Even though Trixie is fully engaged in neutralizing the guy, she manages to dodge arrows at the very last moment. And no one really gives in to her, the little girl tries to aim as accurately as possible and gives 100%, just like her twin brother. At one moment the guy starts to take a strong aggression, definitely in each blow is invested maximum strength, but Trixie is not as simple as it may seem at first glance, because of two strong swings of the opponent, it much earlier begins to realize how to block such a blow and immediately responds. After another fall, the guy almost started crying. He couldn't believe that their team had never defeated Trixie. The audience was watching such events with great pleasure, because the gym was already boring, and there was nothing else to do but work. In the end, at this rate, a whole year has passed since Trixie started fighting with the twins. She was twenty years old for sure and the boys were already 18. During this time about 15 more survivors came to the gym, and unfortunately among them about 8 people immediately lost their lives. The men she'd brought here had already joined the scouting team and were doing their jobs. James behaved as usual, trying to suck up to the most important people and acting as their right-hand man, thus establishing himself as a trusted confidant. Everything seemed to be calm and going as it should, Trixie, like everyone else, was a member of this efficient system, and as a fighter for her risky work received several times more items than the other kids. By the way, after a whole year, the kids still hadn't managed to defeat Trixie, despite the fact that she had already told them directly how to do it. Every time, instead of just trying, the guys said that it was difficult and unlikely that they would be able to do it right away. So the girl concluded that they could only do nothing they were not capable of anything else, at least not until they grew up. But still she didn't give up hope, and offered to show the guys in practice how to improve their skills significantly, and finally understand the difference between what level they are at now, and what they could already be at. To feel this difference, ideally, you need to go on a real exploration. As strange as it may sound, but the children quite willingly supported the idea to go on exploration, literally 30 minutes to collect, and the guys have already gone on a hike, they were in the invitation of how much practice will be interesting. But so far they behave, not quite like real professionals. Trixie noticed some strange footprints on the ground, and immediately told the kids to shut their mouths, or better yet, to concentrate on the task at hand. They were definitely the footprints of some monster, but frankly the shape of the paw was strange, it must be someone new. The boys looked at the footprints with great interest, and before giving their conclusions they tried their best to remember if they had seen them somewhere before. Then Trixie told a very interesting fact. As a rule in this world the smaller the monster the more likely it is to be intelligent. 
since the footprints are quite fresh, it symbolizes that there is somewhere nearby, so in no case you cannot relax and should always be attentive. Suddenly, after walking a few dozen meters, the guys still managed to find the owner of the footprints. His name is White Goblin, Monster Rank F, and frankly, he looks as disgusting as can be. After analyzing the situation Trixie realized that this furry boy had probably fallen behind his pack. So she's willing to leave it up to the kids, and if things get too dangerous, she'll intervene. In that case, the kids grabbed their bows and started firing shots. As I expected, the first time they hit the target, they thought the fight was over, and the monsters were about to pass out. But no matter how it is, from the usual defenseless weak monster, he turned into a dangerous and formidable. It seems that the arrow that fell directly into his forehead did not cause absolutely no injury, but simply acted as an irritant and no more. The speed of movement is off the scale, now no matter how hard the guys try, it's almost impossible to hit him with a bow. The situation was getting more and more tense, and the girls were even a little scared, because the monster was moving straight towards her, ignoring the guy who was closer to her. In order to somehow help his sister, and try to distract the opponent on himself, the guy began to make as many shots as possible, and make as loud sounds as possible. Meanwhile Trixie looked at all this from the side, and just could not believe that these people are even let out to hunt at all. Since the guys were clearly not doing well and the little girl started crying right in the middle of the fight, Trixie's heart couldn't take it, and she ran to help. Beforehand, she activated her power to deal with this monster with just a single punch. In fact, it happened, without much effort, with one skillful movement the girl managed to deal with the creature that had managed to make the two great archers really scared. To make sure that this monster would not wake up, Trixie asked her students to fire a few shots directly into its eyes after the blow. Of course they didn't refuse and responded to the order almost instantly. When it was over, Trixie decided to tell the children what had happened, and if there were more monsters in the future who thought with their heads, they would be able to easily see the loopholes in the children's simple fighting style. If the twins were to lead an entire scouting party and show this level of battle, it would result in a huge loss of manpower. Since it's so bad so far, Trixie has promised to report back when she gets home. Despite the fact that absolutely everyone thinks Trixie is a genius, this is the first time the girl has felt such a strong difference between herself and someone else. We can only hope that through this occasion, the children will have a sincere desire to grow up further. And now the other question. Why did the white-eyed goblin show up here? Usually if some new type of monster appears in the neighborhood, Trixie will know about it in advance, but this time something went wrong. This situation must be taken into account, so in the report the girl will ask to strengthen the reconnaissance in the neighborhood. After a while, the scouting party got one badly wounded. This is a very bad sign that could symbolize that the entire gym is on the brink of war. So far, the only logical explanation is that the bugs have migrated, and now there are many times more of them here. But that's not the end of the bad news, the monster that faced the group last time was not quite ordinary. Instead of the usual F rank, the guys saw the most real D rank. To say that Charlie was shocked it's nothing to say, because so far he has no such opportunities to fight with such strong monsters. In the meantime, Trixie's mind was fully formed. The bugs started to migrate because I had a rank D monster attached to them. Most likely that white-eyed goblin came here looking for salvation. To understand the situation in more detail, the girl decided to ask what that powerful monster looked like. According to a colleague, it was not so big but very fast. Only for this reason the group was not able to see it properly, if to speak directly approximately it looked like a dog of black color, and at the same time had as many as three heads. Now the girl knows exactly who she's up against. The monster's name is Cerberus. Well, as sad as it may sound, this is a serious opponent and his main feature is that he is highly intelligent. In this case Trixie urged the chief not to lose a minute, and right now to begin to form a punitive detachment, specifically for the capture of Cerberus. Not thinking long Charlie supported the girl, and the next day the process was launched, 
Trixie in the meantime continued to train the twins even more Spartan conditions. In case these twins rise to the occasion, then even if there's a rift in the gym, they'll have the skills to protect Charlie. And specifically for herself, the girl decided that she would leave the gym as soon as Cerberus was caught. In general, Trixie has been wanting to leave for quite some time, but since at the moment she is in charge of a lot of people, she had to postpone her departure for a while. From the very beginning, the main goal of the girl was unchanged, is to try to keep her first mentor alive with all her might. She's already desperate to meet her and make amends with the woman who's forever buried in her heart. A mad desire to see her alive and breathing is starting to take over, so Trixie can't stay in this gym anymore and wants to move on. Then the girl was met by the students, and kindly asked what their favorite trainer was doing, and for some reason they had an elevated mood, probably due to the latest progress in training. In the meantime, a team has finally been formed to capture the Cerberus, which is now fully operational, maximally motivated, and ready to do its best to complete its mission perfectly. They also have a couple of their own personal scouts who will constantly help carry food and necessary luggage. Taking such people is a very good decision, because thanks to them the main performers will be distracted by all sorts of little things, this will allow you to keep maximum concentration on the case. The saddest and realize the fact that if Cerberus takes the trail on the guys, there will be problems, at least the lack of any wildlife around, because everyone will be afraid to approach, and at most a serious massacre, which can lead to losses in the personnel. When suddenly by chance in the bushes a girl noticed a trace of bones, James suggested that it might be a trace left by a beetle but it is unlikely that a monster of such a high rank would make such a stupid mistake, then a little farther away his excrement was spotted. The three-headed monster is walking around somewhere in the neighborhood, and there's even a chance that he's watching the boys from some safe place. Meanwhile, it was starting to get dark outside, and Trixie suggested that we continue the search tomorrow and take a look at the place. As soon as the opportunity arose, James went to Trixie, he clearly remembered her telling him that from rank D onwards, monsters have unique skills, so it's interesting to know how Cerberus differs from the others. To be honest Trixie can only say roughly, last time she encountered Cerberus was extremely rare. At least she knows for a fact that Cerberus only exists in a certain habitat, however his unique drinks can be barrier. As soon as the girl said the phrase about the barrier, immediately she and James were locked in this trap. Initially the guys did not quite understand what was going on, but then it dawned on them that this was the barrier, in which case they immediately went on alert, and expected a personal meeting with the Seber. The most interesting thing is that it had been about a few minutes, and the monster did not appear in front of them, taking the opportunity James decided to ask, and what to do to remove the barriers, the answer was short and clear, you need to defeat the Cerberus, or wait until he does not want to remove them but it is unlikely. In any case, now was not the best time to start any serious discussion. The opponent was definitely around and that was the first thing to think about. After some more time, Trixie could probably sense that the monster was slowly approaching them. At the first opportunity the Trixie began to attack, but instead of getting any resistance in return, the monster urged her to stop resisting and just talk to him. James in turn when he heard his voice he didn't faint, it was so unusual. Trixie didn't pay much attention to it yet, in case it was a distraction. Her mind was working out a plan on how to deal with such a difficult opponent as quickly as possible. Since it had three heads, it would have to hit three weak points at once in order to defeat it. But right before the girl was about to strike, the Cerberus once again asked her to stop the carnage, for that was not why he had come here but simply to fulfill a mission to relay some man's words to Trixie personally. After these words the girl was shocked to say the least, how powerful one would have to be to use a rank D monster to send a message, usually such services are available to a very small circle of people. Trixie's first thought was that it might be related to the gate boss. The name of this boss is Beelzebub. When the girl said the name out loud, the monster just turned to her and started smiling and Trixie was not laughing at all. From the look on her face you could tell that the situation was not the most favorable, and anything could happen if such people came at them. Basically if Beelzebub is the boss of this gate, 
then he is the final boss. It's the dark side that controls the whole survival process behind the scenes. But now the big question is why would a great being like him need a lady like Trixie? Cerberus decided to tell them at once that his boss wanted to have a private meeting with Trixie. The details were not discussed. Of course the girl tried to find out why it was her, but there was no concrete answer for her. In general, meeting with the boss's fate, the main task of the performer is to defeat him in a one-on-one -on -one fight. In case this does not happen, the gate will exist forever, without the ability to close it. But Trixie could not even imagine that everything happens so quickly and exactly like this. As befits a boss of the dark world, he looks rather gloomy, his red eyes and long hair fully emphasizing his appearance. This boss is also known as a ghost in the red darkness. The level measuring system showed that he is S-ranked. The most interesting thing is that, before the regression, the object of the boss's obsession was not Trixie, but her first mentor, why his priorities have changed so dramatically to say quite difficult to say. In general, realizing what is happening in general, the girl is not on a joke upset. At last Cerberus repeated once again that the boss was waiting for her, now his mission was accomplished. The girl decided to ask where they were waiting for her, she did it specially to avoid accidentally coming to that place. Unfortunately no clear answer was given, the boss is together where the sun rises and sets. From that moment on, the mission of the Cerberus was 100% complete, he had every right not to stay here any longer. But instead of just leaving, for some reason the monster vanished into thin air, at the same moment the system sent notifications to the guys that each of them had made no contribution to the fight against the Cerberus. For some reason, this powerful creature simply lost its life. The item that is due for its destruction will be given to the nearest person. Since Trixie was as close to it as possible, the item will be given to her. The girl received a healing potion, and items to fulfill mana. As soon as everything was over, the second part of the group ran out of the woods. Judging by their facial expressions, they were really scared, and worried about their guys. But luckily everything was okay for now. But the good news is that the Cerberus is definitely not coming back. At the moment, Trixie's head is so full that it feels like it's about to explode. Beelzebub himself loves women, and he loves doing whatever he can think of to them even more. Last time he told you that his hobby was watching people, and he especially liked Trixie's mentor. But that was not surprising because she was a very strong girl beautiful, and constantly won all the fights. Watching her was a dream and being together all the more so. The boss can also approach a person at the moment when he is about to lose his life and start to heal him little by little, only to the point where his brain can function at least a little. But despite all the moments, the mentor still found the strength to fight the boss and even managed to defeat him. But in the end, despite her spectacular victory, she still lost her life, so it's safe to say that this monster is also the teacher's enemy as Trixie thinks of him and immediately feels a shiver run through her body. But if you think about it logically, it's good that he's interested in Trixie, so she can keep her mentor safe. The next day, when the girl returned from the reconnaissance, she told about what had happened and then said that she was going to leave the gym. This statement shocked everyone, especially those closest to the people with whom she went on reconnaissance every day. It was hard to realize that most likely we would have to part ways. Charlie in turn reacted quite calmly, because he basically assumed that the girl would leave someday, but did not think that so soon, the man did not hide it, he sincerely would like the girl to stay for a period of time. In general, at least the guys were worried about her, because there are a whole bunch of monsters outside, and in addition, the boss himself is hunting Trixie, guys are very difficult to understand what the girl was thinking when she made such a decision. In response to this Trixie said that she had to go on the road to find something. James originally thought it was about family, so he immediately spoke his mind about it. After all, it's been a long time, and the chances of finding someone are zero. Since Trixie is a grown woman and doesn't like to be told off, she immediately shut the guy's mouth. The girl will go in search of another hunter, and by her calculations, she's sure to be in this gate. Because if you draw a parallel between last time and this time, it's around the time Trixie's future mentor got here. But even that doesn't make Johnson's case. 
This time instead of shouting, the girl just calmly explained to him once again, that according to her calculations, the station is already in the gate, and if we talk about monsters for Trixie they are not scary at all, because she can handle most of them without any problem. Then followed a question about the brother and sister, to which the girl also had a short answer. These children have long grown up, and nothing terrible will happen if their coach leaves the gym and starts doing his own thing. And now for the best part. James decided to ask about himself. Turns out he thought there might be something between him and Trixie, and how hard it was to realize that all this time she hadn't even thought about him. And for Trixie, it was a shock that James was in love with her. The boy began to feel very angry, and he tried to manipulate his emotions when he said that if Trixie left, it would mean that they were nothing to each other. But as you might expect, childish manipulation would not penetrate such a steely woman. In the end, after a harsh answer, James just jumped out of his seat and left the tent. He just couldn't contain his emotions. Trixie reacted quite calmly, because she really had no feelings for the man at all. She said that when the time came, she would inform them of her departure, and that she wouldn't have to worry about the scouting team she was in charge of because it would be under the reliable control of brother and sister. After these words, Charlie realized that he probably couldn't stop her, so he urged her to explain herself to the others before she left, because it had been a long time and people were getting attached. You can't just break contact like that. Meanwhile, James fell into a real depression. The man separated from everyone, and preferred in deep loneliness. The only one who he lets near him is a flashlight. Against the background of this situation, he began to look for problems in himself and think that he has never been fair and friendly as others. Then he began to remember his first days in the group with Trixie. Then the guy couldn't even say he wanted to be a hunter, but he had no choice, so he joined their ranks. In general, his original plan was to escape alone, but at one point he got greedy. There was just a mad desire to stand next to the dazzling Trixie but in the back of his mind he knew that he would never be her friend, much less a young man. Mostly his head was not given to just one thought, there has to be at least one way to make her stay here. The next day Trixie did what Charlie had asked her to do, she started going to the people she worked closely with and told them that she would have to leave the place soon. The first to go was Maria, and strangely enough she took the situation very badly as well. As it turned out Trixie herself is not a sanitary woman at all, and even if the person next to her starts crying, she just told him that her leaving is not at all depressing, but nevertheless, when the situation approached critical, Trixie still tried to do something. For some reason Maria assumed that the girl was leaving them because they were all weak and didn't fit in with her. So, before leaving the place, Trixie had only been busy handing over her duties to the others, and saying goodbye in parallel. The twins looked like they had been betrayed for a while, but in fact they had not been. Now they spend their days walking around the gym singing sad songs to get Trixie's heartstrings up and try to keep her there. Tyson's reaction was quite adequate. He respected the girl's choice and did not try to influence her decision in any way. But this guy was different from everyone else. Deep down he was hurt and unpleasant, but in order not to show how upset he was, he just talked about the fact that he had been waiting for this moment for a long time. But this guy took Trixie for his captain. With tears in his eyes he saluted her and said that in the future he would be happy to meet her because with such a professional as she is not every day you can meet, in general to live together in the same gym was for him a part of it.